well, that was boring. Until, of course, it wasn't. What a strange game that was, wasn't it? The Vancouver Canucks are kind of in the midst of a trade rumor extravaganza where everybody's talking about guys like Miller and guys like Garland and talking about trades and talking about selling and getting picks and getting prospects. And even though this team is still one of the worst teams in the NHL when it comes to overall record, we still have ourselves a team that's able to go out there and play teams like Chicago and actually come away with points. The Vancouver Canucks defeated Chicago 3-1, and this was one of those games where I honestly only really felt a sense of danger as a Canucks fan. Like, in the last two minutes? This wasn't really one of those games that, in my perspective, based on, you know, being a Canucks fan and everything, it didn't really seem like the Canucks had a difficult time winning this game. They only really had to fight off the Blackhawks for about five minutes towards the end there when it was 2-1 to one after Connor Murphy's very just odd, odd one-timer. Was it even a one-timer? I don't know. It was just a shot from outside the perimeter of the face-off circle that goes in off of Halak's glove. But aside from that one little flub, Yaroslav Halak came out here and he played himself a very good game. Coming out here for the Vancouver Canucks saying, I don't care about your signing bonuses. I don't care about Spencer Martin. I don't care that both Martin and Demko are very good to the point where some fans are saying it's okay to trade me. He's got his no move and he's got it for a reason. Yaroslav Halak goes out there and makes 20 saves on 21 total shots. Now, to be fair, those shot counts didn't really increase a good amount for a good chunk of this game. Like, Chicago was held shotless for a good amount of time, and it kind of balanced itself out nicely because the Vancouver Canucks, I think towards the last 13 minutes of either the first or the second, I believe it was the first, they didn't get any shots themselves either. So, a lot of patterns for Vancouver being on full display here today. Two defensemen on the power play, no shots for an extended amount of time, but they still pull off the win. And this one came off the performances of a few pretty nice names. The Canucks looked really good to start out this game. It's almost like they were angry after what happened against Calgary, where this team just came out there, they didn't get any shots, they had one shot in like the first half of the game, or two shots, they had one shot in the first period against Calgary. They came out here against Chicago saying, okay, screw that, we're not going to do that again. Sorry, Chicago, but you're just going to have to be the target of our frustration after a very bad Calgary game. They came out here flying, they came out here soaring with some shots and really good opportunities. Petey had a few chances in front. He had an almost breakaway as well as an almost backdoor tap-in, both set up by Connor Garland. You had yourselves Justin Dowling, who had a really good backhander on the rush that was saved by Flurry. A few seconds later, though, it gets turned over along the boards. Hoaglander goes over to Dowling. He chips it in front to Chason, who shoots it, and he scores. It's top cheese. Alex Chason from Dowling and Hoaglander. Two of the guys in this lineup are not regulars. Dowling and Chason were both inserted in today. And you have yourselves Vasily Podkolzin being one of the guys who was taken out. A lot of people were very frustrated about that, saying, okay, Pod Colson, man, this guy's a good player. Why are you scratching this guy? Why is Chase on playing a set of pods? And I'll go out there and say it right here. If there was a time to go out there and scratch Vasily Pod Colson, now would be the time. Like, don't get me wrong, I love pods as much as everybody else does, but if I were to say that the Pod Colson that suited up and started scoring a few goals to kick off his career at the beginning of the season was the same Pod Colson that we had been seeing in the previous three games or so, I'd kind of be lying, and I wouldn't feel comfortable saying that, because Pod Colson, the previous few games, hasn't really been getting any special teams, and when he gets placed on the top lines, he hasn't really been the most effective as of late, and so I could totally see this scratch, this healthy scratch, just being one of those, okay, we're going to sit you down for a game, give you some time to reflect, and try to get somebody else in there because you're going to be back later. We just want you to go out there and feel, you know, that you're actually playing for a spot. Maybe this will be a spark that will allow Pod Colson to kind of get things up a little bit to a higher gear in the next few days. Maybe even as soon as tomorrow against Nashville. Who really knows? But Pod Colson, even though he's a good player, he's good enough to be in the NHL. I'd say that as of late, there hasn't really been 
the best of Bud Colson on display, so scratching Amir today, having Dowling and Chase on in on the bottom line, it made sense to me, and they get themselves a goal here, so it's very nice to see, of course. Dowling, obviously, is the guy who sets it up. Chase on is the guy who scores it. Chase on draws a penalty immediately after, and the Canucks, I mean... They're kind of carrying over that mojo from Calgary. They didn't score anything on the power play then. They didn't get any shots then. But this time, they don't score anything either. Good movement on the power play, but it doesn't convert. The Hawks got a 3-on-1 immediately after this. And Lafferty missed a wide-open net to keep things 1-0. Cannot believe that he ended up missing that one. That was a wide-open shot. I don't even know how this one goes like off the heel or the toe of his stick. It's one of the two. And it just flies over on the far side. It doesn't even go over the crossbar. But eventually the period ends off. It's just one nothing. Dickinson had a Meyer pass in front that became a really nice chance at the end of the first. The second period starts and Halak actually goes out there and shows off his worth. He has a few big saves early, tips and fronts and rebounds. And the Vancouver Canucks... Kind of get on their heels, but hey, guess what? They fight to see another day. And Alex Chason helps out with that. He has himself a really good defensive play to break up a two-on-one. He comes back and kicks the puck away on the pass. Eventually, the Vancouver Canucks control it very well in the Chicago zone. You have yourself some cycling going around. Eventually, it's Quinn Hughes who takes the puck down the boards with some space. He shoots it towards the goal, and it's tipped in by Brock Besser on a weird angle. 2 nothing Vancouver. And after this... I just kind of watched this game, had it on in the background, just kind of glanced over once in a while, listened to Shorthouse on the commentary. I didn't really feel any sense of danger in this game, pretty much until the Murphy goal. This was partway through the second period when Brock Besser got the 2-0 goal. But every other note that I have here written down, oh, it's Petey drawing a tripping penalty. It's the Canucks who don't get the power play goal, but who do well in controlling the puck. It's Halak making some okay saves. Good setup by Patrick Kane. You have yourselves Miller, who almost got a breakaway in tight, but he got tripped. It drew a penalty. The Canucks don't get anything on the power play. It doesn't really matter. The Canucks are still winning. It's okay. And towards the end of the second period, I have this note written down. Chicago just doesn't have it. They make too many passes or they keep on missing the net. And the Vancouver Canucks are doing a really good job at just neutralizing everything it is Chicago wants to do. It's the end of the second period. It's 2-0. And a third period starts out and the Vancouver Canucks almost get themselves two very good scoring opportunities. Brad Hunt with a burst of speed almost gets a solo goal coming in. Miller had himself a very similar play later on. Dominic Kubalik for Chicago had himself a cross-crease backdoor play, but as I said, the Blackhawks keep on missing. He misses this one. It doesn't go through. Eventually, speed picks up. The Canucks get a few shots. Fleury is standing tall. It's still 2 nothing though. And then I write here in my notes, I spoke too soon. Seven minutes left, and Murphy takes a long-range one-timer from outside the faceoff circle, and it goes off Halak's glove and in. What a weak goal. Terrible range, terrible the way it goes in. Yaroslav Halak, you're not going to like that one because that one is like one of the ones where it's like, you had it, you had it, it was right there. But it goes off of his glove and in. That is the only Chicago goal on this game. And the Blackhawks, honestly, after that Murphy goal, I started to get a little bit worried. I was worried for none of the first 53 minutes of this hockey game. But after that Murphy goal, it sort of felt like everything Chicago had was super hot fire. They had themselves some zone time, some shooting, and I was kind of getting clenched up in my seat here watching it go through. Up until the Chicago Blackhawks get a too many men penalty with three minutes left. Are you kidding me, Chicago? Now, Vancouver does not go out there and score. They've been missing on a lot of power plays. They don't convert here. Connor Garland had a beauty cross crease pass to Hunt for a one timer, but that one just didn't go. And eventually, when the penalty was killed off, Chicago took it back. I started feeling nervous again. Chicago pulls the goalie and Patrick Kane has it in the offensive zone. He holds on to it for a while. He tries to snipe it in. It gets blocked. Shen picks it up. He stares down the net on the other side of the ice and he just slides it over the stick of Gustafson all the way down the ice into the smack dab middle of the empty net. 3-1 Vancouver as the final score. Luke Shen with the empty net marker. And the Vancouver Canucks hang on. This game was honestly not really the best game from an entertainment point of view. Like, sure, there were a few shots on goal here and there, but like, that was a game that I kind of am happy to watch just because the Canucks won. 
Like, you could really see the difference between playing this team and playing Calgary. Like, even though Calgary is Calgary, this Chicago team just had so many opportunities that they flubbed and that they didn't convert on, and the Vancouver Canucks had opportunities like that as well. It was just kind of a weird game. But hey, the Canucks win, right? Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about this Vancouver-Chicago game. I hope you enjoyed this British Royal Troll 9 And... Bye.